Yeah, so uh, today I just wanted to share, I guess, a shortish story of how I personally uh, ended up getting into my marketing career. Um, so I guess just to set the scene, back when I was younger, even through like sort of secondary school, further on to like GCSEs and A levels, one thing I always felt, I guess, a little bit out of place and very different to quite a lot of other people is I didn't actually know what I wanted to do my life, uh, the career path, and I always find it a little bit, not in a bad way, but a little bit frustrating when you see people who know exactly what they want to do, like, okay, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a nurse, I want to be an engineer. I, I hadn't a clue, and that even continued up until doing my A-levels the whole way through. There were subjects I enjoyed, there were aspects of certain things I enjoyed, but I just, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And it became quite difficult because I knew I wanted to go to university, but it becomes a little bit more challenging when you just don't know what you want to do. So it becomes more difficult to sort of pick the right actual university degree and path to get you into this life you want to live when you just still don't really know. So, I mean, for me, just out of chance, this is a, a terrible reason to pick a course, I guess. Uh, but... I, I mean, I, I still do and I always have done love video games and I'd seen a course around game design. I'd love computers and like ICT as we had called it back in our school years. I really enjoyed that. So it sort of led me into doing that. And even going through university, I was still in this stage of it doesn't quite feel right. This doesn't feel like this is something I would want to do for the rest of my life. I became more challenging when you're thinking, is it worth just trying to figure out what it is I want to do? And I guess, especially when you're younger, you can probably put a, probably too much pressure on yourself, especially when you want to try to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. And at least in my case, it took years and years to find out what I wanted to do. And honestly, most of it just happened by chance, to be honest. So it was sort of part way through uni, uh, a few of our like side modules were marketing related just just like minorly but they're just sort of like optional ones you could do that linked in with marketing and writing and both of those ones I really 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 enjoyed it's ones I did well in I didn't feel like I had to like push myself to, or in a weird way force myself to do other work because I enjoyed it so much so it was much easier for me to stay sort of like committed to it and I just it didn't much like anything else, it didn't actually really feel like work because I enjoyed it quite a lot more. And then it came down after university and then the sort of dread and fear sort of sank in again that like I need to figure out my life. I've spent all this time going back and forth thinking, not knowing what I wanted to do and it got equally as stressful then. And then I ended up moving back home to Ireland. I just looked everywhere, got basically the first job I could get my hands on which wasn't, it was just like a data entry job at the time. So just working in Excel, putting through orders, processing things, managing bits and bobs. But with that one, they had someone who, I, I don't think he was technically in a marketing role, but he looked after a lot of things that would sort of fit into a marketing career or marketing job role. So he looked after the likes of their website, uh, around promotions and bits and pieces. He ended up leaving and going into a different career path and I'd worked quite closely with him so even in the last few months of that role I started then doing a lot more marketing-ish related tasks and roles and I, I started to really really enjoy that and then just out of chance it was like a friend of a friend had started his own business uh, it was his father at the time and he was looking for someone just to help out so it was a very small startup bit risky but it primarily was a marketing focused role at the time so it was like just managing trying to get out promotions help set up their website help build up like the, the contact list and yeah I mean at, at the time there was a lot more to it than just marketing especially with it being a startup I've always looked back and said I would always recommend considering um, joining a startup for anyone, especially in the beginning stages of your career. I mean, there's definitely some downsides to it. I mean, I find it quite stressful at times because you're 
for most startups, you're working with like a very, very, very small team. You're not just going to be focused on a very specific role. So you're going to be picking up bits here, bits there. You, you just have to do what you need to do just to help the business out, really. But I had learned so much in, it was just under a year I had worked there and I'd learned so, so much. And yeah, I, I, looking back, it's probably one thing I would just recommend to anyone, even just to consider it, to be honest, especially in the, like the start of your career or if you're maybe not 100% sure what you want to do. Because one of the key things I took away from it is probably just don't put as much pressure on yourself. Some people just know what they want to do and that's great to be honest. But if you're a bit more like me and you just, you're not, you're really not sure, just don't put as much pressure on yourself. Try different things. And as bad of, of an advice as it might sound is, it will just fall into place. You'll try things, you'll, th you'll find things that maybe you just don't enjoy. You'll learn sort of your own strengths, your own weaknesses and things, maybe career paths that maybe you could be better suited for. And even with that, even if you get a career that you fairly enjoy, maybe it's not your true life passion, but even if it allows you to spend maybe time after work and you can build up and maybe, I don't know, for an example, maybe if you want to be a writer, you love, love, love writing, but you just feel like you can't sustain your life. Maybe you have, you're further on in your sort of career and you have family, you have kids, you have other commitment. But I just think if you can even allocate a small amount of time maybe even every day or every week whether it's like 30 minutes an hour maybe when your kids have gone to sleep or when you've got in from work and you have a little bit of time although you it can be a bit exhausting at times just giving yourself that sort of time for yourself to sort of push it and do things that you really truly enjoy it doesn't always have to be something that'll end up making you money but as long as you're doing something that makes you happy uh, I mean, for me, that's one of the main things. But ultimately, that startup career, uh, they had like a lot of financial difficulties. It happens, to be honest, with a lot of startups. It's it can be incredibly difficult to break through in a market to get a product ready. There's there's a lot more stuff behind the scenes that it's not easy. It's a big risk, especially for the people who put their sort of life and their savings and all their energy into it. Sadly, that one didn't really work out. Um. But that then enabled me, I was in like a stage for about maybe a month or so where I was out of work. I was contemplating going back home to Ireland again and then maybe just trying to figure out it like is marketing the sort of career path I want to go down. Luckily, I sort of just gave myself just a couple of weeks off just to think about what I wanted to do. Started to apply for jobs, got an interview. I think at the time they didn't actually say who the business was or what it was for they mentioned it was a marketing executive role so it was a very more specific marketing role so it was something that interested me then because i'd sort of done more of a varied role when i was working at the startup and all my roles before weren't really marketing related although some things did actually tie into it to be honest yeah and then i ended up uh, having a few interviews there i thought they went terrible to be honest that's probably hopefully people that hired me don't see this but I, I thought it went pretty awful to be honest I was a nervous wreck never been good at interviews got slightly better I think over the years but um, yeah I ended up getting that job and there was a digital marketing executive role for Stoke City Football Club at the time and again that was I'd worked there for a little under four years and it was again an incredible experience I worked with both an experience my man the marketing manager there had a lot of experience he'd been working there for years and years and had a background in graphic design. So I learned like a phenomenal amount from him. We also then had a wider team. So another team member was, I'd say more, had a more skill set around the copy and the writing and the proofreading. So I learned a phenomenal amount from her. And we had another team member who was more focused around the data side. So I just, that entire experience sort of, I guess was the first big, big push uh, that got me through and, really helped me understand that like the marketing area the marketing career path is something that I genuinely was excited to do and really wanted to do and then that just led to my current role so I worked for at the time it was like a mid medium sized uh, tech business in the automotive industry and what sort of happened there was their marketing manager was going off on maternity leave so they needed someone to cover 
And then the idea was then when she came back, we'd then work together because the idea was just to slowly grow up the team because the business um, was in this sort of stage of growth. And that's basically how I got to where I got to today. And ultimately it is a lot of luck, but I would say like the sort of key thing for me is if you're in my position, maybe if you're younger or you're just in that stage of going through uni or deciding whether you're going to go to uni or not, or maybe you've just started your career path and you're still not really feeling, you know, this is what you want to do and you're not sure where you want to go is just to probably try to take some pressure off yourself. I wish I had done it all those years ago instead of constantly worrying, getting stressed about I need to have my whole life planned out. I need to understand where I'm going. I'm just going to be a mess. I don't know what I want to do. But just to take the pressure off, try different things. Try to understand what your strengths are, your weaknesses. And like ultimately, you, you will tend to hopefully just fall into something that you enjoy. Because it's okay just trying different things. Maybe you'll try a specific job and road and you don't like it. That's fine. You can maybe move into something else and just keep trying. And then hopefully, like me, you'll just stumble into something that you do really enjoy and there's aspects of it that you just want to continually grow and improve on. And then, yeah, and then if there is other things on the side you really enjoy doing. So for me, it's just about like trying to create content, get better at writing and storytelling. And that thing I like to try to just dedicate like small pieces of time after work. It can be pretty stressful with like family and a full-time job. And you might think, I always thought before, to be honest, when I was single and had a full-time job that I had no time. And I think when you have kids, probably the biggest realization is how, like, how, how much time you actually do have. But if you can even just, I've been able to like to just cut out bits of time. Cause you, I, I mean, I was surprised at how much time I spent, I guess at night when I was just exhausted, mindlessly scrolling on like Twitter or Instagram or watching the same film again on Netflix, just cause I was exhausted and I didn't have the energy to do it. If you find something else that you're truly passionate about and you enjoy, I find that, yeah, you'll probably slip up here and there and there's obviously going to be things that will crop up in your life that will make it certainly more challenging to push forward and grow in. But I think if you can just find those things that you love and you enjoy, it's worth just giving some of your own time to develop that alongside your career. But, but it's going to vary from person to person. Now you find a career that you truly, truly love and you can put all your energy into that maybe there's something on the side like maybe you, you do really enjoy writing and you want to be a writer and that's something that you can't really uh, support your own life with but you can maybe just get a job do as good as you can in that and then just focus those hours that you can of your own into growing into that and then slowly but surely with consistency i believe you can you can get there and then hopefully through everything i'm doing now i can sort of chronologically record and show how it is actually possible hopefully but yeah i hope you got some value out of it i just thought it'd be interesting to share how i got into my career and if you're going through a similar position where you maybe you're not sure what to do uh yeah just try not to put pressure on yourself try different things out try to understand your strengths some weaknesses and yeah, if you have any questions at all to be honest just drop them down below and i'll get back to you but thanks for watching see you in the next one